bought my first e-bike. This is everything you need to know before you buy one too. About a month ago, I bought my first e-bike. It's that one right back there. It's the Rad Runner from Rad Power Bikes, but I'm getting ahead of myself. Before I talk about that, I wanna talk about how I came to the decision to buy that specific bike. Now, full disclosure, I've never been a big fan of biking, but riding an e-bike looks like a lot of fun. I've seen some of my favorite YouTubers riding them around the city. I've been seeing them all over my Instagram feeds, and I've always wanted to get one, but I've been hesitant to pull the trigger on the purchase. But right now I'm looking for new ways to get outside and get a little activity, and I figured when everything goes back to normal, maybe it'll make a good car replacement. So where did I start? Well, the internet, of course. I Googled best e-bikes and read a lot of articles, looked at a bunch of buyer's guides for which features I should be looking for. I watched a lot of YouTube videos, and the bike that seemed to come up the most often was the Rad Runner because of its value and functionality. But doing all that research in a silo can be a bit overwhelming and you never know if you're on the right track. So I wanted to talk to somebody that reviews a lot of e-bikes and in my research, I came across electricbikereview.com and so I got in touch with the founder, Court Rye. Hey guys, this is Court Rye. I do electricbikereview.com. Now he reviews dozens of e-bikes and so I figured he was the perfect person to talk to. So Court, what different types of e-bikes are there? Got cargo bikes. That's one category that to me is just like perfect fit for e-bikes because a lot of people might be trying to do kind of a car replacement or you live in a busy city and parking's an issue and you're like, well, this is fun. I'll get a cargo bike. There are trikes for possibly like an, an older rider or someone whose balance might be an issue. You know, you just need that extra stability. They're really cool trikes. And then there's this category of like fat tire bikes, which are fun, stable, off-road capable a little bit, but it's, it's almost kind of like a look thing, like an SUV. So it sounds like I'm looking for something between a commuter and a cargo bike. So what kind of features should I be looking at? Some of the features that I, I look for actually start with like, is there a dealer nearby who can service this, help me assemble it, um, do maintenance and stuff. Does this company have like a decent warranty? Do they have a good reputation? Before I start getting too much into the features, I'm like, what is this company all about? And then from there, I would look at a lot of, does this have fenders? Is it gonna rain where I'm at? Am I riding at night? Maybe I want lights. And then I'd look at what's my environment like? You know, if you don't have decent tires with puncture protection, then you can find yourself in a really heavy position with like a flat tire e-bike walking back home. Most electric bikes are heavier. I want a drivetrain that has lots of gears or at least a good spread. And what that means is like 10 tiny little sprocket and then like 50. And that, that gives you leverage over the wheels. And it means that I could climb very efficiently. And then of course, like the motor, people have probably been waiting this whole time. Like, <laughs> what about the motor? You know, <laughs> Which motor do you need? If you're a really heavy person and maybe you're just getting back into cycling or you just want that little scooter experience, you're gonna want a heavier, heavy duty motor. So we have up to 750 watts nominal, which means it can peak higher than that. Mid drives are gonna be more efficient, more balanced, like the lower and more centrally mounted that weight is for the motor or battery, the better the experience is going to be. I think I'm leaning toward buying a Rad Runner because it seems to check all the boxes for me. I know you reviewed it and knowing what I'm looking for now, do you think I'm on the right path? As much as I like the Rad Runner, I also really like the Rad Mini. I don't really care about the folding feature and that's gonna add a little bit of weight and stuff. So it's like, well, what's the difference? If you care about comfort, there's really, you know, suspension fork, suspension seat post. Your back, your neck, your shoulders, think about you're riding on this thing. You feel those bumps a little bit more and you're not gonna be able to really do suspension without spending hundreds more dollars and a lot of work. This is really your chance to get like, to comfort or affordable, lightweight, cool. What do you think? You've given me a lot to consider and some options to weigh. This is, it's so, it's so tough, man. I mean, my first e-bike, I had buyer's remorse because I bought the cheaper bike and like almost immediately I was like, I should have spent more and gotten like everything I really wanted. So I'm comparing the Rad Runner to the Rad Mini on electricbikereview.com. And I gotta say, the arguments for comfort are very strong. However, because I'm not 100% sure how invested I am in riding an e-bike, I think that lower price point is a lot more compelling for me. So I just gotta confirm my address and purchase. And now I just gotta wait for it to get here. Well, this is it. The Rad Runner from Rad Power Bikes. 
Now all I have to do is assemble it before I can take my first ride. I did have to go to a bike shop so that I could buy things like a pedal wrench and some bike oil for maintenance and for attaching the pedals to the bike. But now it's just a matter of opening this box up and putting it together. There it is. It's the battery, right there. Let's find out what's in this box, shall we? Okay, it opens that way. We have the pedals, a box within a box, tool kit inside, a wrench, another tool, another wrench, Allen key, flathead screwdriver, another Allen key, and last Allen key. Oh, the instructions manual. Something that I'm sure I will find out as I read these instructions. And last but not least, that little LED light bulb. Look at that. Let's find out what's in this smaller box now. It is the power supply. Nice beefy battery pack. Red, power on, charging red, all charged green. assembled e-bike. All right, let's take it outside and give it its first ride. I'm gonna put the key into the ignition to power on the battery. Right here's the controls. Power on. Shows the battery indicator on the front side. Control panel for power assist. It's got one, two, three, and four. And a button for the high beams. It's time for the first ride. I'm gonna start with just full Full throttle, no uh, no pedaling, just to see how fast it goes on its own. It's hard not to have a smile on your face the first time you, you do it. This time, I'm gonna do some pedaling. I'm gonna progressively go use more and more assist just to see how the difference in effort is. Here we go, starting on one. Okay, so it kind of felt like when you're riding a normal bike and you lower the gear and you feel less resistance against your pedaling, except for when I felt less resistance, I was actually going faster. So almost the opposite effect. As soon as I powered up to the fourth one, it was way faster than it was just with electric alone. So uh, I can't wait to try this out more. I'm gonna keep trying it over the next week and let you know how it goes. So that's where everything went wrong. During that first lengthier ride, I was having a lot of issues with the chain falling off the bike. So I took a closer look and realized that the part of the chain that goes around the back of the bike and comes down before it goes back to the pedals was bent inwards a little bit during shipping. And that was causing the chain to fall off as I was pedaling. So I got on the phone with Rad Power Bikes and they were really cool. I sent them some photos of what I was seeing and they sent me the replacement parts in the mail, which took a couple of business days to get to me. Then I took the bike to a bike shop nearby and they fixed it. Rad reimbursed me a course for the cost of the repairs and was back on the bike within a week. It was a little disappointing that I wasn't able to take it out the first week that I got it, but I was able to get it fixed and now I have the confidence of knowing that my bike's not gonna fall apart on me while I'm riding it. Now, am I feeling any buyer's remorse? No, not at all. I'm riding it about as much as I expected I would. In fact, I'm riding it even more than I expected I would. There's a couple of different ways I'm finding I'm using this bike. One is for exercise. I'll keep the assist pretty low, usually at like a one to offset the weight of the bike, but I'm still pedaling that whole time. I'm feeling a nice burn in my legs my heart rate is up. I definitely feel like I'm getting a good exercise. The other way I ride this bike is when I'm just trying to get from point A to point B with little effort. And that's usually when I'll kick the assist up to a four so that it accelerates faster. And then I'll use the throttle to just maintain that speed. Feels almost like I'm riding a electric moped, obviously not going as fast as a real moped can go, but I feel safer because I can take this on bike paths and avoid the main traffic of the road. So I've taken at least two pretty lengthy rides to test out the battery and I've been pretty impressed with the results. One was more of an exercise ride where I was using a lot less assist 
and I rode for about 30 miles. And when I had gotten back, had realized that only one of the five bars of battery on the indicator had dropped. So I still had about four fifths of battery left. The other one was a similar distance, but I used the assist a lot more and pretty much rode that throttle the entire way. When I got back from that ride, I was pleased to see that only about two bars of battery had dropped. So I still had about three fifths left. I definitely think I can get pretty far on this bike, especially since I tend to pedal a lot more than use the throttle. Now, I have to admit, I am having a little bit of regret not taking Court's advice and going for the Rad Mini, but not really for the reasons he pointed out. One reason I think the Rad Mini probably would have been a better purchase for me is I live in a second floor walk-up apartment, so anytime I go out for a ride, I have to lug this 50-pound bike up and down some stairs, and I think being able to fold it would make that a little less awkward. The other reason is I was hoping to store this bike outside on the balcony where my wife stores her bike, but because of the weight and the size, it really takes up too much room out there. So instead I find myself having to store the bike in my office where I have to track dirty tires through my apartment every time I come back. It is a pretty cool office decoration though. And lastly, and this is a big one, I can't fit this thing in my car. I drive a tiny little Prius seat and I can barely fit a normal bike in the back, let alone a huge e-bike like that one. So this is now starting to lead to discussions like, should we get a bike rack? Should we get a bigger car to support the weight of that bike rack? And I can feel myself going down a costly rabbit hole. That said, I am completely satisfied with my purchase and expect to be riding this thing for at least the next year. At which point I may sell it and trade it up for an even better e-bike. Depends on if my interest in this wanes over the coming months. So do I recommend that you buy an e-bike? Well, that really depends on your situation. Here's where I think an e-bike can really come in handy. Are you able to use it to commute? If so, great, gas is expensive and car insurance isn't any cheaper. Do you live in a bike friendly city? I live near a lot of bike paths and I'm having fun exploring them further and further every time I go out. I do get the occasional snarky comment accusing me of being a cheater, but honestly, I don't care because I can't hear them when they're in my dust. And third, do you want the option for exercise or mobility assistance? Or do you just wanna be lazy and cruise around your neighborhood? Then an e-bike is definitely for you. So if you're considering buying one, just make sure you remember these three major points. Feel good about the company you're purchasing it from. Explore the options that fit your needs best. Is that price? Is that function? Is that your lifestyle? Only you can determine that. And lastly, when in doubt, ask for help. Bike shops are great resources. There's online communities with lots of enthusiasts that are ready and willing to help. Well, that's it. Everything you can expect if you're gonna buy your first e-bike. I wanna thank Court Rye from electricbikereview.com for all his excellent advice. And if you're thinking about getting your first e-bike, what kind are you considering? Or if you're an e-bike veteran, what starter tips do you have? Drop them down in the comments. Make sure you check out cnet.com for more excellent e-bike articles. And until next time, I'll see you out there on the road.